Greetings. Welcome to Introduction to SQL for Excel Users, Part 12, SSMS Tips and Tricks. I am your instructor, Dave Langer. The topic of this particular video is SSMS Tips and Tricks. I want to cover four things, and this is based on questions that I've received via email or via LinkedIn regarding the tutorial. These are very common questions, so I wanted to create a video to hit some of these tips and tricks in case people get stuck or encounter this while they're going through all the videos. So first up, is SQL Server running on your machine slash VM? A lot of the questions I get asked end up boiling down to, they didn't check to make sure that the SQL Server process, the SQL Server service is running on their machine. And I'm gonna go over how you can check that and start it if it is not running. Next up, and this is a very common scenario as well, is your SSMS query window connected? And we'll go into more detail obviously on this, but every query window in SSMS has a separate dedicated connection to the database. And those connections can be severed. Those windows can become disconnected. And that will often give you some weird errors and you can maybe not figure out, maybe you didn't figure out why you were getting them. So we'll talk about that. Next up, this is also quite common, is your SSMS query window targeting the wrong database? In SSMS, not only does every query window have its own connection, but it also has a target database that the query window is aimed at. If you're aimed at the wrong database, you'll get some errors, you'll get the red squiggly of death, and we'll go into what that looks like. And switching the targeted database is quite simple. And then lastly, a few folks, and this is awesome, have been asking me about, hey Dave, if I write some SQL in SSMS and it spits out results in the SSMS window, I would like to take those results, that data, and export it out of SSMS as a CSV file. So maybe I can import it into Tableau or Excel or R, Python, whatever tool you might be using that can operate over those CSV files. This is a very common scenario. You write up a query, you fire it at the database, and it comes back with a bunch of sweet, sweet data goodness, and you want to export that out so you can use it in another tool. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with tip number one. Tip number one, is SQL Server running on your machine slash VM? I'm going to go ahead and flip over to Windows and show you how you can check this. Okay, so here I am in Windows, and this could be your local laptop or your desktop machine, or maybe it's an Azure VM. And I've got SSMS running. Now, one of the things that might be a uh, clue that SQL Server is not actually running on the VM or on your machine is you try to connect. And you can see here, I'm just trying to connect to the database engine on the local machine using Windows authentication because I'm running everything locally on my laptop here. So if I click connect. You can see that it's taking a long time. This is the number one clue that maybe SQL Server isn't running because the way it's set up, if you followed the tutorials that I, that I provided for setting things up, you're running SQL Server locally, either on the VM in the Azure cloud or locally on your own computer which means that if SQL Server is running in the background, this should happen extremely fast. The connection should be almost instantaneous. And then you can see here, I get an error and it says, oh, hey, I cannot establish a connection with SQL Server. That's your other hint. Now, usually what ends up happening for me is I don't wait this long because I know that it's going to pop up with a connection relatively quickly if SQL Server is running. And I get impatient. So what I usually do is I just cancel out of this. So I'll connect again and I'm like, it's not running, so I'll cancel out. Okay, cancel out and I'll just shut this down. So I'm back on the Windows desktop here. Now the easiest way to confirm other than what you just saw that SQL Server is running and also to start it if it's not is this procedure. So go down here to the Windows search bar here and just type in Control Panel. And you can see here Control Panel is an app. If you're not familiar, this is the app inside of Windows that allows you to control various aspects of your computer, which makes sense given what it's called. So, you know, things like your systems, system and security, your networking, hardware like printers, because we all love setting up printers, all the things that you need to adjust and manage your computer. Now, within the control panel, we need to find services. Services are these background programs that run after Windows boot up. In the Linux world, they're called daemons. 
concept is pretty simple, right? There's a program that runs in the background. It doesn't have any sort of user interface whatsoever, and it just runs and it provides services to the computer. In this case, we're talking about Microsoft SQL Server. So that, that service provides us a database engine. So we can go view local services because if you follow the tutorials once again, SQL Server is set up locally, either on the VM or on your machine. So you just need to look at your local services. So we can go ahead and pull up the services app here. And we can scroll down and it's just called SQL Server. So we scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Here we go. SQL Server provides storage processing and controlled access to data. That's pretty cool. And you'll notice here that its status is nothing. So it's not running. So the easiest way for me to do that is just right click on this and go to start. And you'll see this little dialogue and it says, hey, I'm starting it up and SQL Server is running. Okay, this is awesome. Now, if I go back into SSMS, if I fire it up again, this will just take a second. And I connect and see how fast that connection hooked up. So there you go. If you're getting those really long delays on your connection dialogue, it's probably because SQL Server is not running. So go ahead and check it out. And if it's not running, start it up. OK, let's move on to the next tip. OK, tip trick number two. Is your SSMS query window actually connected? So we're going to go ahead and flip over to SSMS, and we'll see how we can ascertain whether or not our query window actually has an active connection to a database. So here I am in SSMS. And I have a query window open. And you can see here that I just selected all the rows from the fact call center table. And you can see the results here. Now, what often happens for various reasons is that this query window, which has a connection or needs a connection, I should say, to a database to actually run queries, will get disconnected. And this could be because maybe your computer went to sleep, or you put it to sleep, or there's any number of scenarios where this will happen. Now, what you want to do is you want to check down here in the lower left corner. And you'll notice here that right now, this query is dis this query window is disconnected. It does not have an active connection to the database. And you may see things like red squigglies of death sometimes. And that's a result of the fact that because this query window is not connected, it cannot resolve, it cannot understand your SQL code. So first thing to do is just check to see, is it disconnected? What you do is you go up here and you hit the connect button. And this tells SSMS that you would like this query window, which is the current one that's highlighted, as you can tell. I want, hey SSMS, I want to connect this window to a database. And you can press the button and you get the connection dialog that you normally see and are used to. You can also, if you would like, just hit execute and SSMS will say, well, you need an active connection to the database. So you can go ahead and say, okay, cool. I'll can go ahead and click connect. But typically what I end up doing usually is using this button right here. Connect and then go to the connection dialog and click connect. And the first thing you'll notice is that now this query window is connected, is connected to the database, but you notice you get a red squiggly of death. And that's what we're going to talk about next. That's the next tip or trick. Next tip, is your SSMS query window targeting the wrong database? This happens a lot. So let's go ahead and check out how to verify that you are in fact targeting the wrong database and then switch it to the right database. Resuming here in SSMS, you can see that we've got this red squiggly of death. And if we hover over it with the eye bar, SSMS tells us, hey, this is an invalid object name, fact call center. Well, we know that can't be true because we got results from the previous execution. So what's going on here? So this code is correct. And the answer is, yes, this query window is connected to SQL Server. It's connected to the database engine. The database engine can house many databases simultaneously. So the next thing you have to check is, OK, after knowing that this query window is connected, you have to ask yourself, which database is it targeting? And you can see that over here, right here in this dropdown. Notice when I hover over it with the eye bar, it says available databases. And if I drop this thing, you can see there's the database we actually are using for this tutorial, the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse 2017 database. But notice you've also got these 
system databases, master, model, MSDB, tempdb. Do not mess with these right now. Given the scope of this tutorial, we're not DBAs, we're not people that administer the database. We don't care about these. As far as we're concerned, they don't exist. This is the only database we care about. But notice that we're targeting the master database by default. That's not the database we need. And there is no fact call center table in the master database, which is why you're getting the red squiggly of death. So changing this is extremely simple. Just go ahead and switch over to AdventureWorks and notice that the red squiggly of death disappears and we can execute the query. Now you can see that now this query is not connected again. I ran it, it ran and it disconnected. And the reason for that is simple. I've actually changed an option inside of SSMS to automatically disconnect a query after it runs, which is typically not what you do. It's not turned on by default. So if you're just curious about why this is now not connected after I run it, it's because I manipulated SSMS for the purposes of this particular video to ensure that these windows get disconnected. There you go. So everything's great now. We're running our queries, we're connected, we're targeting the right database. We know that SQL Server's up and running. Awesome sauce. Now for the last tip. And the last tip for this video, how do you export your query results out of SSMS as a CSV file in case you want to use it in another tool like Excel or Power BI, Tableau, R, Python, whatever it might be. This is a very common use case. So let's figure out how we can do this in a easy and consistent way. Okay, back again in SSMS. And you can see here, I ran a query and I just selected all the rows from the fact call center table. And let's say I wanna export all of this data goodness out of the results window. Now this is kind of silly, of course, because I'm just selecting all the rows from a particular table. But as you're aware, going through this tutorial now, maybe I'm using some window functions, maybe I'm doing an RFM analysis, I mean, who knows, but let's say I've done some really cool SQL and I've produced some awesome data goodness, and I want to export this out as a CSV file so I can use it in another tool. Let's say R or Python, who knows. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is typically we want our CSVs to have a header row where we have literally fact call center ID, date key, wage type, so on and so forth, exported out in the CSV file. This is typically not turned on by default, and maybe it will be in a future version of SSMS, but every version I've used, it's never been turned on by default. Okay, so how you find this is you go to Tools, Options, and what you want to do is you want to go down to Query Results, SQL Server, and you can see here Results to Grid. So this, this is the Results to Grid right here. So we click on this and we say, oh, okay, there's all kinds of options. Notice none of them are turned on by default. The one that we want right here is this. Include column headers when copying or saving the results. And almost always you want the headers. It's very rare. I can't even imagine a situation where I've ever not wanted this to be turned on. So we'll go ahead and click it and check it. Now, here's the problem. We're going to click OK. And for a setting change like this to take effect, we actually have to stop and restart SSMS for the setting change to take effect. So I want to go ahead and close out of this. And I know I don't want to save my query. And then I'll fire SSMS back up again. This will just take a second here. And as it's loading, it's checking all the settings and it says, oh, okay, Dave wants to have the column headers if he exports from data out of the results grid. So let's just go ahead and do this again. Select star, oops, star from fact, call center, FCC. Now notice I'm gonna get the red squiggly here because I'm not targeting the right database. So I'll just do this and execute. Awesome sauce. Okay, so I've got all of these results. So I can just click on this corner of the results grid right here, highlights everything. I can right click and then I can say save results as. So this is awesome. So save results as. And it comes out of here and let's see, let's go ahead and just stick this in on my desktop here. And we can say this is great. And notice that it by default, selects a CSV name. And I'll just call this back 
call center. All right. Now, generally speaking, you could just click save and you'll get a file out on your desktop here. Here it is right here. Right? And I can open this up in Excel because you'll notice that Excel is the default associated program with a CSV file on my computer. Or I can open it up with, let's say, Notepad, for example. And you see all of this. Now, the thing to remember, and depending on the tool that you're using, this will be just fine. It'll work. It won't be a problem. So, for example, if you're using Excel, no problem. You can just double click this and it'll open up without a problem. Some tools, for example, are depending on how you read in this CSV file. Notice here, this is UTF-8 with bomb, this right here. This is what's known as the file encoding. And depending on how you're using certain tools, like R, for example, this could potentially be a problem. But generally speaking, just follow the process that I just showed you. And most of the time, depending on the tool you're using, you're not going to have a problem. But what I do want to show you is if you do use a tool and for some reason it's like, oh, I don't understand this CSV file, it could be because it doesn't like the UTF-8 encoding. So we can take care of that pretty easily in SSMS. So all we do is say, OK, we're going to go ahead and select everything, right click, save results as, and we'll call this back call center two. And instead of just clicking save right here, what we do is we click this arrow. And it says, it gives us the option to say, hey, we want to save with a different encoding. OK, and if you're running into a problem with the process that I just showed you, this might help out. It's the only reason why I'm showing it to you. So you click on Save with Encoding. And notice that the default here is UTF-8, which is what we saw in Notepad earlier. But what you can do is you can then switch it to this thing called ANSI. And this is basically plain old text. So you can always just click OK, and it'll save off that call center 2 here. There you have it. Those are all the tips and tricks for today. Hopefully you're finding the tutorial useful. If you are, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I will be producing two videos a week for the foreseeable future. Until next time, please stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.